Hi, friends. Hello. Yeah, it's uh, I have my chaos community doing their recording in my internal computer, but I thought I would spend a little time outside at the very start of the meeting just because it's nice and it doesn't get to be nice. Like it's, Missouri has this very narrow range of nice weather. It, uh, it goes from cold to like nice and then all of a sudden it's like really humid and you can't be outside. So trying to make the most of the opportunity that I have yeah, I think uh, Cincinnati is similar. It's like we have like one day where we don't have either the heat or the air conditioning on. So we yeah. already had that day. So now yeah. we've got the heat back on and then next week we'll be the air conditioning. So yeah. Yeah, I've had I've yeah, we've gone back and forth between heat and air conditioning for uh like a month now. And today today like the the little bunker I have hasn't required really any heat at all just dehumidification for the, like the last two weeks which is nice i do have the minutes i can put in the chat but so far if no one else shows up i guess we can go through they we do have a pull request outstanding okay i guess we could start to talk about that um because i'll share my screen um it was it was a pretty good pull request actually i went through it and georg had there were just a couple what i would characterize as syntactical issues related to it like colons in certain places and dashes in certain places and um seemed pretty easy to pick up and the um the fact that it was really easy to pick up was it made me think like it would be a really easy one to like just resolve you know but and as, and it was a google summer of code student I, I didn't look to see if they applied ultimately but often they have an incentive to uh, make the changes requested. So yeah, this was standardized repo structure. It says approved now. Made the required changes. Please see review. We catch. We prefer metrically. Seems like it's good. Hi, Vinod and Kevin, by the way. Yeah, hello. Hello. Kevin's here? I guess I don't see Kevin because I'm sharing my screen and he scrolled down. So we're just looking at this uh, reorganization PR. Uh, Georg had a couple of issues that he wanted addressed. Those issues were addressed. So I think we can open the meeting by merging this pull request unless there are any objections? Uh, I actually, uh, I'd actually like to hold off on that. Okay, because you the, are the you are the website guru. So, like, if you don't want to do it, then we don't want to do it. Yeah, the, the minute the minute we merge this, it'll it'll break every evolution metric on the website. Oh, and I'm. Uh, Is that what happened with some of our other ones? Is that why that? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's why we've been dealing with that. Uh, All right. With, so with common, with common, we actually we got ahead of it. Uh, I think with risk, uh, uh, I didn't realize that one had been merged until until after the fact. Uh, yeah, we merged it on the web call because we thought it was all good to go. But I guess there was something we didn't realize was a problem. Well, I don't think the I don't think the process was communicated to anybody. Uh, so. Well, we were making, big, we, this is a, a new, deal. this is a new thing. So yeah. Um, what should I put for the, I think the best thing would be Kevin for you to do a review on the pull rec request and indicate why it's what we're, what actions we're taking so that it doesn't break the website just so that the pull requester doesn't think we're ignoring it. Is that Yash? 
I think it is. Yeah, I think Yash has been our big uh, cleanup guy. Yeah, and he he made a proposal. He, he's actually was... probably pretty familiar with the process. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm uh, I am going to merge this within either later today or tomorrow. It's just I uh, I have to. I, there's some stuff with my mother-in-law. I have to go take her to the doctor. Uh, so I'm not going to have time to. Yeah, no, no, no. Right it's, now, so I don't think this is a rush. This is happening actually very much faster than I expected that it would. So, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of work. I uh, yeah, it was a couple of years back before we even got crazy. I had tried to do some repo standardization, and uh, it was a ton of work, and we kind of got some pushback from the other working groups. Uh, so. Yeah, I think we've reached, I think there's an inertial point in a project where mm -hmm. like at first standardization is like when you're exploring, it's it's standards are hard to really know mm -hmm. what they should be. And uh, I think as we've matured, we've started to all understand what what standards are useful. I think mm -hmm. that's a, a fundamental just evolution, haha, of of uh, of the work that we're doing. Yeah, the jokes, the jokes on us because it would have been easier to agree on a file format early on rather than going in and uh, changing them now. No, I agree. It it would have been. <laughs> I, and my, my point is that it's really hard to do when you're just starting something out and figuring it out. You know, like when yeah. you write a we paper. Never, and... sorry, we never anticipated what is going to happen in future, so we just keep on working, and then we realize, oh, we need to standardize it. Well, I, think, I think we anticipated. I think uh, just moving moving towards the fix was uh, it was harder two years ago than it than it was now. So, yeah, for, yeah, for whatever re for for the reason that Sean is saying exactly. Maybe this should be a metric. <laughs> <laughs> the level, of yeah, the level of standardization across repositories. Yeah, standardization yeah. pushback. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would actually say that based on the repositories I've looked at, like on Kubernetes, I, we are far more standard than, than most. So yeah, I'm feeling, maybe, I'm, maybe we propose this as a metric to common, to keep a, whether like uh, open source communities are keeping a standard formatting for their project or not. Huh. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Figuring out how to measure that. Yeah would be either, tricky yeah either way i am glad that uh i'm glad that we are doing it now because it makes uh it uh you know it's an interdependency thing right so we uh if we're using the yeah. same standards the you know metrics are we we rely on it uh it, when once we start connecting metrics together to create dashboards and things of that nature we need we need standard ways of of uh, uh, connecting to those metrics and talking about those metrics. And so, yeah, standards are very important for interdependencies. We just need a really good regex. <laughs> and then yeah. boom, done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Also, I think this... um, unreal. Oh, go ahead. Go, no, you go. I was just going to say unrelated since we're looking at it on the screen. I just copied y'all's names. So if you don't want to be recorded, you can just delete your name. So I just copied yeah. it from last time. No, I appreciate that. Um, so repository restructuring, uh, we've got we've got progress on that. Uh, if we go back and look at the uh, actual pull request list, we will see that we only have three remaining. So there's a couple from Georg from one from Georg from last fall, and then a uh, a read me to add a second requirements text that I think is going to be closed because it was related to the Jupyter notebooks we removed. Um, yeah. But I just I wanted to get some verification from the pull requester first. So uh, really, there's there's this one we're going to merge shortly, and then I need to correspond with Georg. But I you know there are there were like lots and lots of uh, pull requests that were old and outdated and not relevant anymore. So I, uh, I went ahead and just closed them out.
So item two on the agenda is also taken care of. Yeah. So that's done. Um, and then the next thing we have is to start work on change request commits. And I, I don't remember the, re I, there was, it's kind of ambiguous resolution wise. I felt at the end of the general meeting where we brought that up and I didn't want to belabor it yesterday. So I suppose my question is what process do we want to follow? I mean, what process is in the spirit of how all, all of you understood the discussion in terms of really this, this change request commits in terms of, uh, wait a minute, change request, wait a minute, let me open this. Maybe this isn't the one that we're, yeah. No, this is, so there were some, yeah, commits. So we're calling it commits, but we don't call other things commits. So if we, since they are change request commits, that's literally what they are. Um, we have to, there's some kind of thing we have to do with all the code changes metrics that, that sort of is a cascading effect. And I didn't land, uh, I don't, I don't know, does anybody recall that we landed on a clear path for that particular case? I, vague, I vaguely remember it was brought up in the meeting and I don't, but I don't remember any resolution whatsoever. So I remember, I remember talking about it in the evolution meeting. Yeah. Uh, well, and there, it was talked about not la not yesterday, but two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about it in the general meeting. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think there was any actionable advice or any sort of resolution to it. Does somebody have easy access to the notes from two meetings ago? I uh, probably do because probably that because I recall Sophia had a pretty comprehensive useful set of suggestions there and it would be great if um like I thought I thought I thought she had something that made sense to me but I don't remember all of the detail it was in the uh, call, uh, like journal meeting say that again uh, is what uh, this was in the general meeting this discussion yeah it was in the general meeting two weeks ago we had a fairly extensive discussion about it about like what warrants uh putting a pull request back for review one of the things that came up was we should like date metrics to be re-reviewed at different points in time oh yeah, yeah. so that oh yeah. yes yeah that i recall too yeah, well, I, th and, I thought you were talking specifically about the name change. Well, the name change was part of a discussion about what do we, what do we change, and what, like, what goes through the full review process, mm -hmm. and what doesn't. So yeah, that's so as far as I'm, the yeah, as far as that goes, I I feel like I from that discussion, I feel like I have a pretty good feel for what what would need to go through the review process, what wouldn't need to go through the review process. Uh, the only part of that discussion that we don't have resolution to was the, the issue that I had brought up, which was the, uh, some sort of timer that would uh, basically make sure that metrics that have been released at some point are looked at and reviewed again, right? You know, whether it's after four years or after two years, uh, uh, and I think that was part of the conversation. I put the link in the in the chat, by the way. And I have to. I'm I'm going to have to leave here in 15 minutes. By the way. Yeah, I have a, I have a similar issue with having to leave about 9:40. So. Um, what would that have been? Would that have been March 30th? 20, 23rd, I think. 23rd. And I see, um, I think you can use the API to the GitHub API to like reopen pull requests. So maybe there's a, you know, something we can run every month or something that would look and see like two years ago when that pull request, or you know what I'm talking, you know what I'm saying? Like one of the, when we merge a, a metric like we could maybe reopen it automatically through the API every two years. 
And that would at least like pop it back up to the surface. Oh, that's an interesting idea. But yeah, so the yeah, it looks like the the highlighted the highlighted bits there. I think we're all everyone's on the same page for that. It's just the the after X cycles period. I think I think we still have to yeah. talk about that and come up with the with the process and maybe maybe it's the process that Elizabeth just described. Yeah, I think it was in the 23rd. Yep, yeah, it's, it's the 23rd. After X cycles, we should review the matrix. I see that. But the, uh, but the information that uh, Sean was asking for, oh, what's that? That was on the change request. That. Oh. So whenever there's language or terminology that would affect other metric references, it needs to go to review. Uh, changing the name of a metric, it needs to go to review. Any changes that go beyond grammar or spelling fix fixes in sections, question, definition, objectives, implementation, uh, it needs to go, re go to review. Things that don't require review, grammar or spelling fixes, uh updates to sections references and contributors yeah i feel like you could if it's you know we're changing a reference to something because i think that was a big deal um like i wonder if we could do like a find a find uh like not a find or replace but like a find and reopen the prs of the can we can we do that? I mean, that could be a project for somebody some one time. <laughs> Just search through the metrics, you know, even the PDF, and like identify where what metric it is, what metrics reference the one that changed, if it's a, right. a name. Do you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. I was talking. I was saying, yeah, that that so when we do the pull request to update a metric, we indicate that it's an update to a metric. Is that what you were saying, Elizabeth? Well, I was saying, yeah, yeah, kind of. I was just trying to think about how we could automatically do it. So like if we change, yeah, if we change the metric that would like trigger uh, a check like through the through the, all of our metrics to see if that name previous would you know was referenced anywhere so that we could reopen those PRs and make those changes. Yeah. I notice in so in our metrics in our metrics template there actually isn't a so I mean through the process everything is dated. However, for the metrics template itself, there is no capture date for when the metric was defined or last edited. Uh, and that might actually be something interesting to add to the template because that that could actually that could create a, uh, a, yeah. a basically a tag that we could do an automated search for uh, as well. Say that again. I'm not sure I comprehended fully. So actually adding a adding a date to every metric, like physically adding a date to every metric that we uh, that we push. It's uh, like a release date and revise date and re revise date, something yes. like that. Yeah. So I, okay. I know that stuff is I know that stuff is is just captured through the process of working on GitHub. Uh, but there are more explicit mechanisms that we could use to add add that. And one of the things we could do is actually add it to the template uh, 
a a defined date or a revised date or uh and and we we could also uh uh actually we uh so when we do the release currently we do create a release tag uh so we I, could search we could we could just automatically search for the release tags as well so kevin in the release of what i recall is there is an option like we release new metric and we revise some old metric is there any way you are categorizing these two in the release or both are treated as a just a release? So the, the only place we categorize them right now is in the release notes. Okay. Uh, but we do we do capture that information in the release notes. Yeah, so release uh, note is a good place to look for that, Prali. But that's just a, that's just a text document, right? So we don't have any okay. sort of uh, like to figure that out, we kind of have to scrape it a little bit or, or kind of do yep. a manual look. Uh, but there's once again, we could we could be more explicit about how we do that. Yep. And and on the release when we do the release tag, we could actually uh, mm. we could actually add some uh, a date tag and a reason tag things like, things like that that would basically mark each metric at that time. Uh, but but the problem with that is this is that this process stretches across all of the work groups and it adds it adds more complexity to the release, which is yeah. I, I don't know that we want to do that. It, it's it might just be better to just uh, you know look at the releases and say, you know uh, everything that was released on release number four, you know, 2019-04 uh, uh, should be reviewed in 2022 of that same date or whatever, right? Yeah, I guess, <clears throat> I guess we can decide that we don't have to figure that out in this working group. Yeah, yeah, I think but, that, I think that's a longer I think that's a longer conversation, and uh, I think it's one we have to we maybe do after we uh, after the metrics release process is automated, we can go back and we can look yeah. and see if we can add any sort of extra automation to it uh, or tweak it a little bit. So another another kind of related to this thing that I've been contemplating lately is actually. Uh, building a database uh, to put these metrics in. Okay. To yeah. help to help manage and sort these metrics. Uh, so was... if we build a if we build a database, then in the future we can possibly automate the release process through the database. Yeah. And and releasing the metrics and linking the metrics together and displaying and categorizing the metrics and setting timers and all of that stuff could actually be done through the database. Uh, so yeah, Augur used to maintain a database of all of our metrics that was current, but we we backed off from that because the format was changing so rapidly. I think we could do that again. Yeah, um, it makes it it makes it a lot easier for us to show which chaos metrics are displayed in a report. Than yep. And, uh, and and part of the part of the discussions that we've been having about displays and different ways of uh, kind of aggregating metrics and putting them together. You know, if we have them in a database, it's easier to create those those sorting and the sorting and filtering that uh, that we would want. Uh, so just something I've been thinking about and something that uh, I was hoping I, that the website migration would make easier for us to do. So uh, I think it'd be nice that, to be able to add the database to the website rather than uh, building it separately. I think this was also connected to the idea of with having a glossary for all the metrics or like, you know, the glossary term for the terms for the metrics. Yeah, I'm actually, so I'm actually kind of down on the, the glossary because I, I kind of think that our metrics release like the when we define metrics, we're creating the glossary, right? So having a having another document that uh, that points at uh, metrics definitions and tells you what terms means, 
yeah. uh, seems seems like too much work. Like if, but, if, we're, if we're doing this correctly, when we define metrics, we should be defining these terms, right? It's like by defining a metric, we're defining the term. So. Yeah, but like, for example, uh, that came in the risk working group, like interdependency has so many terms. Similarly, other things came across, which are part of that. Uh, but that's metric. the but that's the idea of that's the whole like we need to define what a pull request is like so that we're all using it correctly right so like, well yeah. we have done that it's it's a change request so we've already defined it that's that's but a term that we use I, we should be using I'm that term saying, and we need to so if we're not uh, what I'm trying to say is like there are terms which are uh, not the metrics we are defining the metrics not the term. So if there is a term which is not a metric, but it is a term used within the metric and there's no clear definition on it, how we are going to define it. That's my point of view. I mean, most of our most of our atomic metrics, frankly, are definitions. Yep, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, give me give me an example of something that needs to be defined for. So like, uh, are we uh, defining the transitive dependency? Do we have a metric for transitive dependency? Do we have a metric for direct dependency? So we don't, we don't yet, but yeah, I think we need to, right? So rather than, rather than creating a glossary to define the term, I think those are, if it needs to be defined, it probably needs to have a metric related to it, or it needs to be addressed within a metric. Just having, having a separate glossary document for work that we're already doing seems like extra work and something that uh, would be really, really hard to maintain. Okay. It was just a suggestion, so maybe. Oh, oh yeah, believe me, yeah. I'm not a. No, 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 I'm, I'm fine with it. But like, I see the terms which were yeah. not clear yeah. to me. That's where I felt this need. So maybe yeah. a better proposal is like, let's uh, convert those terms into a metric first, and then it'll be obvious thing. We don't need any definition for them. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, 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 that's that's my only point is that, uh, well, like, I, I agree that a glossary would be helpful. I just think that it's, it's duplicate work of something that we're already doing. Uh, so it, it makes more sense to put that energy into defining an atomic metric rather than uh, creating a glossary. Because once we create that glossary, we have to maintain that glossary. Yeah. Uh, Uh, yeah, I, I, I guess, yeah, my general view on glossary is our atomic metrics are our glossary. Yep. So. Uh, however, uh, a database that would allow you to do keyword searches would probably would help with that, right? So if you yeah, do a search can, for a pull request and that can come back and say, oh, we call those change requests. And these are the, all the other terms that uh, uh, might be used. So we, um, we have Google Summer of Code students this summer who have applied to do um, work on the website. And one of the things we could do is just sort of, um, Basically, we have a table in Augur that already has all the data related to metrics. We just don't keep it up to date or show it anymore. Be, like again, because I said the the act, you know, getting the metrics in there, where we put metrics, how we stored them, just kept changing from working group to working group, and it became mm -hmm. frankly impossible to keep up with. But I don't. I think we're in a different place right now, and we could store the substance of all the metrics in a, in a database. Yeah. I don't and, think that's a, I don't think that's a, this summer Google summer of code project, but I think that's a, that's a maybe next summer Google. It could be. Yeah. Project or. Yeah. Or something we do. Uh, it's definitely. It's definitely something that I've had on my mind lately though. Yeah. As we, as we started talking about the, the um, standard reports examples kind of replacing community reports. Um, I signed up to mentor one of those students because Augur can automatically generate things. And so we can make that a regular occurrence with very little effort yeah. if we automatically generate 
those could be basically the fundamental PNGs behind the report. And then somebody can just paste them into a blog post. Yeah. Um, and this would be along the same lines. Like it's pretty easy to get a metric into a database, but it, yeah, I agree. It doesn't, it certainly doesn't have to be this summer. No. Yeah. And it doesn't, I mean, uh, as far as like metric content goes, it doesn't have to be complete, right? We can just point, we can just put URLs in there to point to where it needs to go. Absolutely. So it can be a, it can kind of be a, a higher level database, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, we could even add a, we could even add a table to the, 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 um, the WordPress site. Well, so I, if, uh, if we're building a table, then I would actually like to add some dynamic content to the website where uh, metrics displays can be uh, possibly uh, put together through some sort of uh, uh, user selection process, right? Where you can right. you can select collections of metrics that might be important to you, or uh, but in, in this it's. Uh, probably not worth talking about right now, but no, no. Uh, yeah. was, if we're doing a database though, I would like to go more dynamic with it. So, yeah. And uh, it comes up because we're about to work on a pull request commits metric that will immediately force the issue. Yeah. Okay. I do have to go. All right. So sorry, we got, we got sidetracked. No, I mean, I don't think it's sidetracked because I, I don't think we can discuss the metric that we're proposing without sort of having a game plan. Um, and now we have that. So um, goody for us. Uh, do we want to with the, and I only got about seven minutes left today myself. Do we want to look at the, um, the pull request commits metric and see where we're at? Elizabeth and Vinod. It's the next thing on the agenda, or do we just want to say, okay, we resolve some things, whatever people favor. This one's pretty. I mean, we have I say in resolution. What? Uh, sorry, say uh, in terms of the release process. Uh, no, I'm saying like, do we have anything in pending or um, we just have to review this? I think we have gone through this this couple of times, no? Oh, okay. Let me um let me take a look at our metric tracking spreadsheet. Not value for some reason there. So this was the. Change request commits. We have a start. It says we have a started working document. And so I, I suppose we could take a brief review of that started working document and see if it is um, ready to place under review if you want. Is that what you're suggesting, Bernard? I'm fine with anything. All right, well, let's uh, take a look. What is the pattern of commits? What is the average size on the codes of the commits? Perhaps change request commits, enumerate each commit the lines of code on average and merge requests. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Apparently, I had some wrong keys. Those are the only two data collection strategies I'm aware of. Internet is getting unstable. Just going to respect Markdown's preferences and double space contributors. <laughs> I think I agree with the general gist of this metric and then the only thing I see is missing is the visualization. Uh, I have a issue with the like question, what is the pattern? Pattern seems to draw just the lines of four we have portion. Like we have two questions rather than one question. So anomalies are, I basically listed two anomalies. I am happy to take them out. Um, so in a pull request or a, commit, a merge request, there's uh, how large is are the commits in that merge request. So each merge request will have X number of commits that contain X number of lines of code changes. And <clears throat> That's that's a difference that can be useful for understanding patterns of behavior in a repository. Right. Commit sequence. Pattern in commit sequences sort of are are this like are people editing one file at a time and right. committing like in that order? Frequency of changes in the commit. Yeah, are they are they making commits that overwrite their previous commits, that kind of thing. And then merge request patterns are simply really how many commits are in a merge request. Yeah, um, but like. Uh...
Did we lose? We Vinod? lost Kevin. I don't. Oh, we did lose Vinod. He was like in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> All right. Well, um, in, you have to go anyway. in light of that loss, um, I think we made some good progress this week in the evolution working group. Uh, and um, I've actually got a pull request for the handbook. Um, and, but we were just about to wrap up because we lost you, Vinod. I have to go. Yeah. So okay. yeah. Um, I will make you, I'll make Elizabeth the host and you all can bid us adieu um, probably seconds after I depart. <laughs> all right. Talk to you later. See you, yeah. My internet is getting unstable. I don't know whether I'm audible or not. It's constantly giving me this message. Internet is unstable and and I'm yeah. unable to even edit the document. It's like not connecting. Well, let's just go ahead and end the meeting then. That's totally yeah. fine. It's eight minutes yeah. early. It's totally fine. So yeah. I will see you later. See you. Bye. Bye.